Hello you guys, welcome back to the Lightford House. If you're new here, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. Today we have something exciting to unbox with you. I saw this on the Tyler Tube YouTube channel, so shout out to Tyler Tube. This is the Presto Stuffler, Stuffed Waffle Maker. And I got this off of Amazon. Like I mentioned, I saw this on Tyler Tube. He actually made a bacon stuffler. He cooked the bacon in this microwave bacon cooking contraption and then he put it in some waffle batter in here and made that and then his second one he used some strawberry pie filling out of a can and I was thinking this would be really good to try um, just all kinds of different things. So today we're going to make two different stufflers. We're going to make a savory one. Uh, we're going to do some ham and cheese. And for the second one, I was thinking we would do something sweet, so maybe some green apple, cinnamon, cream cheese type mixture, but I'm excited to try this with all different fruits. So I have to get this thing unboxed and washed, and then we're gonna go ahead and prepare our waffle batter per the box instructions. Let's see, the top of the box kind of gives an overview. Just add the batter, add the stuffing that you want to put in your waffle. You're gonna close it and flip it over and then lift and serve. And it's got these waffle tongs. And it also stores like standing up. So I think that's gonna be really good for saving space. All right guys, I've cleaned the stuffler out with a damp cloth that had some soap and water and then took another wet cloth and just kind of got the soap out with that and dried it out. It says not to submerge this in water. I've also gone over the instructions. You can take the tongs and wash those in the sink with hot soapy water, but do not try to wash any part of this in the dishwasher. What we're gonna do is prepare this pancake mix right here per the waffle instructions, and then we're gonna get started. Now this does take 10 minutes to preheat. So the instructions state that you wanna go ahead and gather your ingredients and then plug this in and allow it to preheat as you're mixing your batter. Um, this light will be on whenever the unit is plugged in, so this doesn't necessarily mean that it's heated up. It will take about 10 minutes to heat up. So let's plug this in. All right, and the light is on. You also want to have the tongs in there while it's preheating. So we'll go ahead and get our waffle mix ready. All right, I followed these directions to the T, and it says that this is going to make 12 4 by 4 inch waffles. Okay, but this does not look like it's going to make 12. This looks like it might make two of the stufflers, and we do want to have a thicker batter than the pancake. So definitely follow the waffle instructions, not the pancake instructions. Another note in the instructions about this waffle iron, it said not to use any type of nonstick cooking spray. There's already a nonstick surface there. And make sure that you never touch this part. Of course, that should be self-explanatory. You only wanna use the handle that's on the machine. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and get out the ham and cheese that we're gonna use, and I'll go ahead and slice up a green apple and some cream cheese as well for the second waffle that I'm gonna make. All right, so the stuffler has been heating up, and the instructions state to prepare the batter while the waffle maker's heating up, you're gonna open the waffle maker, pour the batter into the waffle maker so that the bottom grids and waffle divider are thinly but completely covered. It's about a third a cup of batter. Then we're gonna add the filling and then we're going to pour additional batter over the filling until it's the top of the square projections on the waffle tongs. It also says to leave a little margin between the filling and the inside edge of the tongs. Okay, so. We're gonna do that. If you are using any like frozen fruit or anything, you'll want to thaw it out before using it. So you wanna use fresh fruit for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the ham and cheese one. And I'm just using my little fourth cup measuring cup. I'm just gonna go ahead and just kinda of eyeball this. Okay. I'm gonna open up the machine here. And we just want to fill the bottom. You want to lightly cover this bottom portion. We don't want to overfill it either. So I said about a third of a cup. And it's going to spread out, so you don't want to overdo it. And now to that, I'm going to add in some ham and a slice of cheese. 
If you're using any type of sauces, you'll want to layer them over the filling that you're putting in here, like the meat or whatever you're going to use. I'm going to put quite a bit of ham. It's like three slices of lunch meat that I've torn up and then one slice of cracked singles right there. And you don't really want the filling to go past the middle line of the waffle tongs. And then we're going to fill this up. Again, you don't want to overfill it, but you just want to place the batter in. And it says to fill it to the top of the squares on the inside of the waffle tongs. That seems like a lot of batter, so I don't know if I'm going to do that much. I don't want it oozing out everywhere. I think this is going to be good. And I may have overfilled it. I don't know. Actually, that looks like it's about right. So then we're going to close it. And let me get the batter out of the way so I can flip it over. Flip it over. So far, nothing has leaked. So as you can see, nothing dripped out. I did read reviews on Amazon. Um, so far, nothing has leaked through. You'll want to set a timer for this. And we can also check here on the side and make sure that nothing oozes out as it cooks. I'm hoping that it doesn't because... Um, that's the one thing that I hate about using a waffle iron. So I'm going to watch the time. It's now 4.04 p.m. in the afternoon. And I'm just making these for a little afternoon snack. So we'll give it about 7 to 8 minutes to cook. And then it should be done. And I've also seen that some people flip it over like midway through cooking to allow both sides to cook. In the instructions, it doesn't say to do that, but I guess you could if you wanted to, I guess. And also it says when you first use this product, you might smell a slight smoke smell or burning smell. Actually, I'm smelling the waffle cooking now. I'm just hoping that I did not overfill it and that everything comes out good. So check back with you once it's done. All right, you guys, we have just a minute left here. Um, on our eight minute time that we've got and it does not say that you have to flip the machine back over before removing it you can go ahead and just open it squeeze the tongs together as you open it and then just lift the tongs out and put it on a plate so we're going to do that here in just a moment all right it has been eight minutes i'm going to go ahead and try to film with one hand and remove the waffle with the other and let's take a look all right so here we go we got the tongs squeezed together and we're coming straight over to a plate. Let's check the other side. So it did get a little well done on the other side, but looks good overall. Put this back on the machine and I'm going to cut into this and see what it looks like. So it got a little bit well done right there, but the rest of it looks really good. It did say in the manual that the outer edge is going to be a little bit lighter than the actual waffle. So let's cut into this and see what we've got. You guys, this one's really good. All right, now I've loaded up the next waffle on here, the apple and cream cheese, and it was making a little sizzling noise and I thought maybe I had overfilled it, but so far nothing's coming out of the sides, so that's good news. I'm gonna finish up this piece of waffle and then Keep an eye on the time here. All right, this one has just a minute left and then we're gonna open it up and remove it to a plate. All right guys, the apple one has come out of the machine. I gave it seven minutes. It looks a lot better. There's no burnt edges here and nothing overflowed out of the machine. So I've got it unplugged and it's gotta cool down before we can clean this. So overall, I'm impressed. I will leave a link to the video below on the Tyler, for the Tyler Tube channel um, so that you can see the video where he tested this machine out and the other kitchen gadgets that he tested on the video as well. Let me cut into this and show you what the inside looks like before I end this video. All right, so I sliced the apples pretty thin, hoping that they would kind of cook. So I'm gonna give this one a little taste test and report back to you after it cools down for a second. All right, so I split this in half with my daughter. She tried it as well. And the apples do kind of taste like apple pie because I put some cinnamon and sugar on them. I think I did put a little too much cream cheese in there, but overall it tastes pretty good. Um, so yeah, so far it's my first time trying the machine out and I am impressed. And I will post more videos as we go with different um, flavored batters and things like that. So be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you like waffles. 
and um, leave a comment below if you think that this is something that you might try out. So um, thanks for watching the video and hanging out. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.